All right. So now I've got the main components I want. Now I want to jazz it up a little bit and add some effects to some of my shapes, give them some sh uh, shadows, give them some texture. And I think I want to start with the idea of uh, right and red lights kind of appearing around it. So I'm always going to encourage you guys to find inspiration. And so if I look for um, police lights blaring, I can see that kind of the image I have in my head is lights out of focus. And here they look like stars. Here they look like X's. Here they're just kind of blaring out of focus. And this is a little bit more disorienting. So I like that. And so it's always good to kind of see inspiration and then use that to inform your own ideas. So this one in particular, I'm not going to composite with this. That's, I'm just doing a Google image search, not a Pixabay search. I'm just kind of looking at the colors that are there and the edges that are there that might suggest this kind of menace. That, that drop in your stomach that you feel when you see sirens behind you. And then the relief you feel when it's for the person in front of you, you know, instead of you, whatever it might be. All right. So I like this approach. So notice that these are not just flat shapes that are cut out. There's soft edges that are gradated. And that's something that's a little bit more challenging for vectors. But because we've already built them as vectors within PhotoP, they're solid cutout shapes we can add that attribute to them. So in order to show this, I'm going to make duplicates. And you can make duplicates of multiple layers. So if I select both the, the red and the blue, you'll notice that when you select the layer and it's a shape layer, it will show you a little blue outline around it. Just to remind you it's a vector shape. And if I hit Command J, it will duplicate and call each of those a copy on top. And then they're both selected so I can use my move tool and I can move those somewhere else in the image. And I can even control T and maybe flip them horizontally so you have that slight change of angle of the triangle. So I have a lot of kind of weird symmetries going on, like the teeth being the exact same angle, the same shape but different sizes. Now the triangle Maybe I'll enlarge them a little bit. Hold down Shift, hold down Option so it grows in the middle, and enlarge it. And then maybe I push this behind the image. Maybe I'll rotate it a little bit more and push it behind the hat. So it's like the, the lights are going on behind the head of the officer. So how would I do that? Well, I take these and I can move them down. I can drag and drop but that will only move one at a time. If I have both of them selected, a shortcut for moving a selected layer down through the stack is Command on a Mac, Control on a PC, and left bracket. That will move them down. So I can just move them down until I can see that they're behind the hat. Right? Okay, now I have to do it individually. So I'm going to start with the blue circle and double click on the layer, not the layer icon, but the layer itself, you know, in the space around where the type is. You don't want to double click on the type, the title of the layer, because that will just let you retitle it. So instead you're clicking around the type and you'll get your layer style options. And you can move this so you can see what you're doing. And this can go a little slow in PhotoP, it's the exact same in Photoshop, but PhotoP takes a little bit longer to process it. And I'm gonna try, remember I'm looking at my um, inspiration here. So I'm gonna try having it glow from the outside. So I'm gonna go to Outer Glow. And then I'm gonna click on that option and play with these. 
and I'm going to increase the size of that glow and the spread of it so it's a little bit stronger. It has this default kind of bright yellow, which makes it look like a light. But I'm going to change that because I'm looking at my inspiration. I want it to be a really intense kind of cyan blue. So I'm going to pick a different color. More intense. And then I can play with the opacity of it. So this is actually transparent unless I make it 100% opaque. But even if it's 100% opaque, notice the soft edge, and that's because I'm spreading it with a softer glow. Then I want to play with the jitter, which means it won't always be always the same. So now it's a little bit uneven. And I'm going to play with the noise. I'll zoom in so you can see it. Oh, you don't even need to zoom in. And that will give it a little bit of texture. It will just break up the pixels, kind of spread them out a little bit, which works well for emojis, so they read at different sizes. Now my only problem is that inside color doesn't work anymore, right? It doesn't look like a light unless it's almost pure white. So how can I work with that? Well, instead of changing the color here, I can do, use the color overlay within the layer style. And I can change that from red, which is its default, to white. And then I can just take the opacity down a little bit. So the blue comes through slightly, but not very much. And now when I click on a different shape, you can see how that light really feels like one of those blue police lights. And right now, it's actually overlapping the skull, but not overlapping the hat. So if I wanted to move it down below the skull, I could do that as well. But I think I like it overlapping the skull a little bit. So if I want to move it up through the layers, I do Command Right Bracket. I'll just move it to where it was. Okay. And I like how it's overlapping the red. Now here's a nice trick when you have layer effects. What if I want to copy those effects exactly onto the triangle without having to, to do them all by hand? I can duplicate that layer and then just drag and drop the effects onto the new layer and then erase that layer that I copied. So now you can see it, there's just slight red, slight blue, right? But of course I wanna change the color of my red light to a more orangish red glow. So now I can go in and I can click right on the outer glow options, double click, and it will take me right there and I can change that color immediately. And I can change the blending mode, take the opacity down a little, or this is going to be pretty cool, pretty different rather. Let's get it back to red. Clicked somewhere I shouldn't have. I want the opacity at 100 so the noise comes through, but instead of it being a solid red filled in, zoom so you can see. I'm going to, instead of filling it with a flat, I'm going to fill it with a gradient. And the gradient, I'm going to start with something like this that gradates between purple and orange. Double click on that, 
Come on. It should give me gradient options. There we go. So that if you click on the gradient, you can customize this. And I'm going to change this to the red, but have it fade out to the orange. Maybe I'll deaden that red just a little bit, like that. And I can change the orange to something a little, a little less orange. Like that. Whoops. <laughs> Need to hit OK. Lots of practice and repetition. So this is all optional for you to play with, but you'll see kind of the advantages of it. You have to hit OK a lot of times, but you'll get there. And then you can kind of troubleshoot it. So why, why does this look softer than this? And I think it's because it's on normal mode instead of, oh, this one is on screen mode. Oh no, that one's on, oh, let's see. Yeah, on screen. So let me try screen mode. It's gonna lighten it a little bit. but that will make it sharper. Actually, not as much as I thought. Oh, it's just I need to increase the noise. There we go. OK. And because it has its effects mapped to that, that layer, I can still rotate it, move it, change its size, and the effects will change with it. Maybe I want to have this subtly suggest horns. So that's outer glow. I can also add, there's just so much, I can also add an inner glow to it. I'm going to make it normal mode so you can see it. I'm going to make it a deeper, kind of more purpley red. I'm going to expand it. So it softens that triangle a little bit. Make that noisy too. And then I can move it down below the skull. Though I do kind of like how the it's kind of spattering on the head there. Yeah, so I think I, I do like it a little bit higher. So again, command, right bracket, I should call it action key because it's control on a PC, command on a Mac. So action key, right bracket will move the layer up. Uh, action key, left bracket will move it down. But I do want it underneath the blue. Okay, now how can I copy those effects onto these? I make a duplicate, Command J, and then I'm going to move those, just the effects, drag and drop them onto the others, and then delete the duplicate I copied them from. Same thing with this, make a duplicate first, move the effects, 